Welcome to Smart Contract Revolution, Inside Ethereum. I'm Aria, your host for today's show. Today, we have the privilege of diving deep into the world of smart contracts within the Ethereum ecosystem. Joining us are experts who will shed light on the technical, legal, and transformative aspects of smart contracts. Let's explore how Ethereum is revolutionizing contracts and transactions. To truly appreciate the impact of Ethereum on the world of blockchain and smart contracts, it's crucial we start at the beginning. Landon, can you take us through the origins of Ethereum? How did it all start? Absolutely, Aria. Ethereum was proposed in late 2013 by a programmer named Vitalik Buterin. Inspired by Bitcoin, Buterin wanted to extend the capabilities of blockchain technology beyond just a secure ledger for transactions. He saw the potential for a platform where developers could create decentralized applications using smart contracts. It's fascinating because the concept of smart contracts wasn't entirely new. Nick Szabo had coined the term in the 1990s, envisioning contracts embedded with code that could execute themselves. But what Ethereum did was bring this idea into reality on a blockchain, making these contracts not only self-executing, but also immutable and distributed. That's a foundational shift. Ethereum essentially introduced a programmable blockchain that could do more than just process transactions. Landon, from a technical standpoint, how significant was the introduction of Ethereum's smart contracts? It was revolutionary. Before Ethereum, blockchains were quite limited in their functionality. Bitcoin, for example, was primarily a digital currency. Ethereum's smart contracts introduced a level of programmability that opened up endless possibilities. Developers could now create decentralized app apps for various uses, from finance to gaming and beyond, all without a central authority. And this innovation has led to an explosion of new applications and protocols built on Ethereum, hasn't it? Exactly. We've seen the rise of decentralized finance or DeFi, NFTs, and so much more, thanks to Ethereum's technology. It's not just about sending and receiving digital currency anymore. It's about creating entire decentralized ecosystems. That's right. And with these advancements, the legal landscape has had to evolve as well. Smart contracts challenge traditional legal frameworks, raising questions around regulation, enforceability, and jurisdiction. It's a new frontier for law. I can imagine the legal implications are vast. With smart contracts, automatically executing transactions without intermediaries, there must be a lot to consider from a legal standpoint. Absolutely. While the technology promises to reduce fraud and increase transparency, it also navigates uncharted waters in terms of legal responsibility and rights within these contracts. It's an ongoing discussion among legal professionals, regulators, and developers alike. It seems like Ethereum has not only innovated in the technical sphere, but has also prompted significant conversations in legal and regulatory environments. What started as an idea to extend blockchain's use cases has truly transformed how we perceive contracts, transactions, and even ownership in the digital age. Delving deeper into our main topic, understanding smart contracts requires a grasp of what exactly makes them a game changer. Landon, could you demystify how smart contracts work in a way that our audience can easily understand? Certainly, Aria. Think of a smart contract as a digital agreement that is programmed to automatically execute, control, or document legally relevant events according to the terms of the contract. They run on a blockchain, which means they operate in a decentralized environment. This eliminates the need for intermediaries like lawyers or banks because the contract itself verifies, executes, and enforces the terms of the agreement. Adding to Landon's explanation, from a legal perspective, this simplifies and secures transactions to a great extent. The terms of the agreement are not only transparent, but are also immutable once they're on the blockchain. This characteristic can diminish disputes since altering the terms after the fact is virtually impossible without consensus from all involved parties. It sounds like the self-executing nature of smart contracts offers a level of efficiency and trust that traditional contracts simply can't match. Can you provide an example of how this technology is being used practically? Sure. 
In the realm of decentralized finance, or DeFi, smart contracts enable the creation of protocols that replace traditional financial intermediaries. For instance, lending protocols allow people to lend or borrow cryptocurrency, setting terms directly within a smart contract. This removes the bank from the equation, potentially offering more favorable terms for both parties. Another intriguing application is in the area of supply chain management. Smart contracts can automate and record each step of the supply chain on the blockchain, ensuring that products are delivered and handled according to the predefined conditions. This not only increases transparency, but also significantly reduces the likelihood of fraud. These applications illustrate just how transformative smart contracts can be across different sectors. Beyond finance and supply chains, are there other areas where smart contracts are making an impact? Absolutely. In the art world, for instance, smart contracts are behind the surge of non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. They enable artists to sell their work digitally, with the ownership and authenticity of each piece being verifiable on the blockchain. This has opened new revenue streams for artists and has changed how people collect and invest in art. And let's not overlook the impact on real estate transactions. Smart contracts can streamline the process by automatically executing when conditions are met, such as transferring ownership once payment is verified. This capability could significantly reduce closing times and costs associated with real estate transactions. The potential for smart contracts seems almost limitless, touching numerous aspects of our lives. As we continue to explore this topic, it's clear that understanding how they work is just the beginning. Their practical applications have begun to reshape entire industries, offering a glimpse into a future where many of our traditional processes are more efficient, transparent, and secure. With that said, I think it's time we zoom in on one of the most talked about applications of smart contracts, non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Landon, can you give us a brief overview of what NFTs are and why they're specifically transformative in the art and collectibles market? Sure, Aria. NFTs are unique digital assets that represent ownership or proof of authenticity of a specific item or piece of content, thanks to blockchain technology. Unlike cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, which are fungible, meaning each unit is the same as every other unit, NFTs are one of a kind. In the art and collectibles market, this technology allows creators to monetize digital art, collectibles, even tweets, by selling them as unique assets that cannot be replicated. This has fundamentally changed how digital artwork is valued, sold, and owned. From a legal perspective, it entered interesting dimension to copyright and intellectual property rights. Artists can sell their work directly to a buyer without the need for intermediaries and the blockchain ensures that the history and ownership of each piece are permanently recorded and easily verifiable. This transparency significantly reduces the risk of fraud and theft, which have long been concerns in the art world. That's a massive shift in how artists can reach their audience and benefit from their work. Can you tell us about the impact of NFTs on the art market, Landon? Absolutely. We've seen digital artists who previously struggled to monetize their work now making significant earnings through NFT sales. Additionally, it's not just individual artists who benefit. Galleries and auction houses are also entering the NFT space, with major players hosting digital art auctions. These sales sometimes fetch millions for a single NFT, highlighting the growing demand and acceptance of digital art as a legitimate investment. And beyond just art, we're seeing NFTs impact the collectibles market, from unique digital trading cards to virtual real estate in online platforms. This craze isn't just about owning digital art, it's about being part of a new cultural shift towards valuing digital assets as much as, if not more than, their physical counterparts. It's fascinating to see how NFTs are changing the perception of ownership and value in the digital age. Landon, with Ethereum being at the core of the NFT expansion, how does its infrastructure support this growing market? Ethereum's blockchain plays a pivotal role in the NFT ecosystem. Its smart contract functionality allows for the creation, sale, and transfer of NFTs in a secure and decentralized manner. 
the Ethereum standard for NFTs known as ERC721 and its successor, ERC1155, enable developers to create interoperable NFTs. This means NFTs minted on Ethereum can easily interact with a broad ecosystem of apps, marketplaces, and services built on the Ethereum platform, providing a seamless experience for users and creators alike. The interconnectivity within the Ethereum ecosystem certainly seems to fuel innovation and utility in the NFT space. With such a broad impact across various sectors, it's clear NFTs on Ethereum are more than just a passing trend. They're reshaping how we think about digital ownership, creativity, and even investment. As we've discussed, Ethereum's role in facilitating groundbreaking applications like NFTs and decentralized finance showcases its immense potential. However, Ethereum, as it stands, is not without its limitations. High gas fees and scalability issues have been significant points of concern. This brings us to a pivotal evolution of the platform, Ethereum 2.0. Landon, can you introduce our listeners to Ethereum 2.0 and its objectives? Certainly, Aria. Ethereum 2.0, also known as ETH2 or Serenity, represents a series of upgrades aimed at addressing the very issues you mentioned. One of the core components of Ethereum 2.0 is the transition from proof of work, POW, to proof of stake, POS, consensus mechanism. This shift is expected to enhance the network's scalability, security, and sustainability significantly. Additionally, Ethereum 2.0 will introduce shard chains, which will further increase the network's capacity to handle transactions and smart contracts. The legal implications of this transition are quite intriguing. The move to a proof-of-stake model might alter how transactions are validated in terms of legal responsibility and governance. It also raises questions about the role of validators, their selection process, and the legal ramifications of their actions within the network. Those are valid points, Serena. The shift towards a more environmentally friendly and efficient blockchain aligns with broader societal or societal concerns about energy consumption and sustainability. Landon, talking about proof of stake, can you elaborate on how this change will make Ethereum more scalable and sustainable? Sure. The proof of work model, while secure, requires a tremendous amount of computational power to mine and validate transactions, leading to high energy consumption. In contrast, proof of stake relies on validators who are chosen to confirm transactions based on the amount of cryptocurrency they're willing to stake or lock up as collateral. This method is inherently more energy efficient since it doesn't require the same level of computational work. Moreover, proof of stake allows for greater scalability because it can process transactions more quickly and cheaply than the current Ethereum blockchain. With these significant upgrades, Ethereum 2.0 seems poised to overcome many of the hurdles that have constrained blockchain technology's broader adoption. Serena, from a legal standpoint, how do you see these changes impacting the regulatory landscape? The transition to Ethereum 2.0, especially with its proof-of-stake mechanism, will likely prompt regulators to re-examine existing frameworks. The fact that Ethereum will become more scalable and potentially host even more decentralized applications means regulatory bodies will need to consider how to protect consumers without stifling innovation. Additionally, the environmental benefits of moving away from proof of work could align with global regulatory moves towards sustainability in financial technologies. It's clear that Ethereum 2.0 has the potential to address some of the most pressing challenges facing Ethereum and the blockchain space in general. As we look towards the future, Landon, how do you envision these upgrades influencing the development of new applications and the expansion of the decentralized web? With Ethereum 2.0's enhanced scalability and efficiency, I expect we'll see a new wave of decentralized applications that were previously not feasible due to cost or technical limitations. This could accelerate the adoption of blockchain technology across industries, from finance to healthcare, by making decentralized solutions more accessible and user-friendly. Essentially, Ethereum 2.0 could serve as a catalyst for the next generation of internet applications, driving innovation in ways we've only just begun to imagine. Fascinating insights, Landon. 
Your perspective on Ethereum 2.0 highlights the platform's ongoing evolution and its potential to reshape the landscape of decentralized applications. Now, as we shift gears, let's delve into a critical moment in Ethereum's history that has left an indelible mark on the community and blockchain technology at large, the Deo hack. Serena, could you briefly walk us through what the Deo was and the events that unfolded? Certainly, Aria. The DAO, which stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, was essentially a venture capital fund built on the Ethereum blockchain. It was designed to operate without any central authority, using smart contracts to let participants vote on investment decisions. Shortly after its launch in 2016, the DAO raised a significant amount of Ether, making it one of the largest crowdfunding campaigns at that time. However, Things took a dramatic turn when a vulnerability in the DAO's smart contract code was exploited by an attacker, leading to the theft of 3.6 million Ether, which was worth around $50 million at that time. This event not only exposed the technical vulnerabilities in smart contract code, but also raised questions about the broader implications of such decentralized systems. That's a pivotal chapter in the story of Ethereum. What were the immediate reactions within the Ethereum community and the cryptocurrency world in general, Serena? The hack sparked a heated debate within the Ethereum community about how to respond. There were concerns about the integrity and security of the Ethereum blockchain, and discussions centered around two main options, do nothing and let the attack stand as a painful but important lesson or intervene by hard forking the Ethereum blockchain to revert the attack and return the stolen funds to the DAO investors. Ultimately, the decision was made to proceed with a hard fork. This move effectively split the Ethereum blockchain into two separate chains, Ethereum, EE, where the stolen funds were returned to the DAO investors, and Ethereum Classic, ETC, which continued on the original blockchain without reverting the theft. That decision must have been incredibly contentious. How did it impact the Ethereum community and the broader perception of blockchain and smart contracts? The hard fork was a defining moment for Ethereum and the blockchain community. It highlighted the challenges and ethical considerations of governing decentralized systems. While the fork restored faith for many in the Ethereum project by prioritizing investor protection, it also sparked debates about the immutability of blockchains and the role of human intervention in such technologies. Indeed, ARIA. It also served as a wake-up call for smart contract developers about the importance of security and thorough testing. The DAO hack underscored the fact that while blockchain technology offers incredible opportunities for decentralization and innovation, it is not immune to vulnerabilities and requires rigorous oversight and development practices. It's clear that the lessons learned from the DAO hack have had a profound effect on the development of Ethereum and the entire blockchain ecosystem. It's a reminder of the potential risks and the need for continual improvement and vigilance in technology. As we wrap up today's discussion, any final thoughts on the path forward for Ethereum and blockchain technology? The path forward involves learning from the past while staying adaptable to future challenges. Ethereum's continuous evolution, including the transition to Ethereum 2.0, shows a commitment to addressing scalability, security, and sustainability issues head-on. For regulators and the legal community, it's about finding balance, enabling innovation while protecting users. And from a technical perspective, it emphasizes the importance of community, collaboration, and open dialogue in navigating the complexities of decentralized systems. The DAO hack was a pivotal event, but it's also part of a larger journey towards building a more secure, efficient, and inclusive digital future. Thank you, Serena and Landon, for your insights today, and thank you to our listeners for joining us in this exploration of Ethereum's impact, challenges, and the continuous evolution of blockchain technology. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and never stop innovating. Goodbye.